Good morning, dear students. Uh, welcome to this new chapter, Electromagnetic Induction. The course we are studying is uh, Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazar. And this is the last chapter in your textbook, Physics Matters. And this is the last chapter about the electromagnetism. Okay, let's start. Um, one idea um, in the previous chapter we have discussed, one idea was that, that when the electricity flows through a conductor, magnetic field is created around it. In the last chapter we have studied, and we have studied this idea that when electricity flows through a conductor, around that conductor or around uh, uh, that solenoid, a uh, magnetic field is created. So we have learned that when the motion of charge particles take place, magnetic field is created. So opposite of that, I mean, when there is magnetic field, can we make the charge particles move? I mean, with the help of the electricity, if we are able to create magnetic field, with the magnetic field, are we able to make electricity? So this is the big idea. That with the help of, uh, uh, you know, you studied a DC motor. And in the DC motor, we studied with the help of the electricity and the magnetic field, we created motion. So is it possible that with the help of the magnetic field and the mechanical energy, I mean the motion, are we able to create electricity? With the help of the electricity, we can create the magnetic field. With the help of the magnetic field, we can create the electricity. This is the idea on which this chapter is. So in this chapter, we will learn that uh, with the help of the magnetic field, if we can create electricity. Let's start this chapter. Okay. So the very first uh, thing which we will be learning is that electromagnetic induction. Um, if you have a conductor, we will study this uh, phenomena in detail, uh, but here we have just the definition. This is the basic thing which we are going to study, electromagnetic induction. So by changing the magnetic field, we can create, we can induce electricity in a conductor. By changing the magnetic field, which is uh, passing through that conductor, by changing that magnetic field, we can create EMF, we can induce EMF, or we can induce current in a conductor. This is called electromagnetic induction. This was first discovered by Michael Faraday. On your screen, you can see the, the photograph of that gentleman, uh, Michael Faraday. He's a big name in electricity. So Michael Faraday was the first scientist who, um, by chance, discovered that thing. Uh, that by changing the magnetic field, we can create electricity or EMF in a conductor. And this, this process is called electromagnetic induction. Okay, so here we have, uh, here you can see, here we have, um, this is called Faraday's solenoid. This is Michael Faraday's experiment. And what he observed that he had a solenoid. Solenoid is simply this coil, this copper coil, and it's in the spiral form and it's like a spring. And he had this solenoid, 
and that solenoid ends are connected with a galvanometer. Galvanometer is a, a meter like ammeter. It shows you the direction and the presence of electric current. It can show you that if the current is present here or not, and if and what is the direction of that current. So this is a galvanometer that if if there is no current present in those wires in which you have attached the galvanometer, the pointer of the galvanometer will remain in the center. So if the galvanometer shows deflection either to the right or to the left, it means that there is current present or there is EMF in that wire. So what they did, they have a solenoid like this. This is the solenoid. And they connected it with a galvanometer. And you know, because there is no source of electricity there, because there is no power supply, there is no uh, cells, there is no battery connected. So obviously there is no electricity in this coil, in this solenoid. So the galvanometer pointer will remain stationary. It will remain in the center, which means that there is no current. What they did, they brought a permanent magnet. They brought a permanent magnet near that solenoid. And very interesting thing they observed is that when they move that permanent magnet, for example, you can see the permanent magnet north pole is toward this solenoid. And when you move the permanent magnet towards the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection. And when you stop moving the permanent magnet, the galvanometer pointer becomes in the center, which means there is no current. And when you withdraw the permanent magnet, or I mean, when you move the, this permanent magnet away from this right side of the solenoid, even then the galvanometer shows deflection. So what they observe, when you move the permanent magnet towards the solenoid, galvanometer shows deflection, which means the electricity has been induced or in, and electricity is present in that solenoid. And when you move the permanent magnet away, even then the galvanometer shows deflection, which means that the electricity is induced. What they observed that the electricity or current, or you may say EMF, is induced in this solenoid when the magnet is moving. Whenever this magnet moves, either it moves towards the coil or it moves away from the coil, electricity is produced, induced in this solenoid. If you stop moving the permanent magnet, the galvanometer pointer comes to the center of the galvanometer, which means no electricity is produced. So from here, we concluded that when the permanent magnet moves, electricity is induced, EMF is induced in the solenoid. And when the permanent magnet becomes stationary, there is no electricity induced in the solenoid. It's a very important fact. You should remember this, that if, if, uh, if, the, galvan if the permanent magnet moves, the galvanometer shows deflection, which means electricity is there. And if you stop moving the magnet, the galvanometer pointer rests in the center 
which means no electricity. So from here, whenever the permanent magnet moves, electricity is induced in the solenoid. And when the permanent magnet is at rest, no electricity is induced in the solenoid. Another interesting thing, when the permanent magnet is, the north pole is facing the right side of the solenoid, when the north pole is approaching the right side of the solenoid, the deflection, for example, if you consider, for example, the deflection is towards right. The pointer of the galvanometer shows deflection towards right. When you move the north pole away, from the right side of the solenoid, the deflection will be towards the left. So I mean, when the, the north pole of this permanent magnet is approaching the right side of the solenoid, the galvanometer shows deflection in other direction. But when the north pole is, is, is moving away, is withdrawn, from the right side of the solenoid, the galvanometer shows deflection in the opposite side. For example, if the in the first instance, the deflection is to the, towards the right, then in the second instance, the deflection will be towards the left, which shows that when the permanent magnet's north pole is approaching the right side of the solenoid, the direction of the EMF produced is different and when the north pole of this permanent magnet is moving away from the right side of the solenoid, the EMF produced has opposite, opposite direction. So these are the observation of the Faraday's solenoid experiment. So from here we concluded that whenever this permanent magnet moves, EMF is induced in this solenoid. If the permanent magnet stops moving, no EMF is induced in the solenoid. And whether the EMF is induced or uh, there is no EMF induced, that is shown by the deflection in the pointer of the galvanometer. And we also know that the direction of the EMF depends upon the direction of the motion of the permanent magnet. So, I hope that you have understood this story. Let's move to the next. Okay. So, these are these were the Faraday's observation. So, it's the same case. Here we have a permanent magnet. Here we have a solenoid. The solenoid is con connected with the galvanometer. The... The North Pole is approaching the right side of the solenoid, then it's withdrawn, it's approaching, withdrawn, approaching, withdrawn. These were Faraday's observations. When a magnet was inserted in the solenoid, the galvanometer needle was deflected in one direction. When the magnet was withdrawn from the solenoid, the galvanometer needle was deflected in the other direction. When the magnet was stationary in the solenoid, the galvanometer needle was not deflected. Remember, the deflection on the galvanometer comes only when the magnet is moving. Whenever the magnet will become stationary, when the magnet will stop moving, the galvanometer will show zero deflection. The, the pointer of the uh, galvanometer will be on this zero position. I hope you understand these words. I have, I have already explained to you these words. Okay, so here we have another example. Uh, you can see in this diagram, we have a solenoid. The solenoid is connected with a galvanometer. Here we have a magnet. Now this time the magnet is on the left side of the solenoid. It's approaching, it's taken away, withdrawn, approaching, moved away. From the, his observations, Faraday concluded that a relative movement between the solenoid and the magnet induced an electromotive force, EMF, or voltage, in the circuit, which drove an induced current detected by the galvanometer. Faraday also found that the magnitude of this induced EMF could be increased by increasing the number of turns in the solenoid, the strength of the magnet, 
speed at which the magnet moves with respect to the star. For example, suppose, you know, uh, so one thing uh, I can explain to you is that uh, when this magnet is moving, the EMF is induced in this solenoid and the current is induced in this solenoid and the galvanometer detects that current and it moves from this is this this center position either it moves to the left side or it moves to the right side so if it moves to the left side it shows a certain direction of the current and when it moves the to the right side it shows another direction of the current so we observe that uh, the strength of the current which is induced or the strength of the emf induced uh, in this solenoid and how do we know that what is the strength uh, of the induced EMF or induced current? That is shown by the deflection. If a strong EMF is induced, if larger amount of current is induced in this solenoid, the deflection on this uh, galvanometer will be larger. And uh, so there are some factors on which the the, 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 the magnitude of the induced EMF or induced current depends. For example, if you increase the number of turns per unit length of this solenoid, for example, if you see that in one meter, how many turns are there? Or in one centimeter, how many turns are there? Increase the number of turns of the coil per unit length. And if you increase the number of turns of the solenoid, uh, the current induced or EMF induced its magnitude will increase. If you use a stronger magnet, if the permanent magnet which you are moving, if you use a stronger magnet, the EMF induced or the current induced will become larger. If the speed by which you are moving it, for example, if you are moving it slowly, slowly, the EMF induced here or the current induced here will have smaller magnitude. But if you move the magnet faster, if you move it quickly towards and then away, towards and then away, then the deflection here will be larger. The reason is that when you move the magnet with the speed, the EMF induced or the current induced will be larger another very important the words which were used here in the first two lines is the emf in the solenoid is induced only the emf is induced only when the magnet moves whenever the magnet will become stationary there will be no deflection in the galvanometer. There will be no EMF induced. So whenever the magnet moves, EMF is induced. If the, e the magnet stops moving, no EMF is induced. And the important thing is that relative motion of the solenoid and the magnet is important. I mean that the magnet and the solenoid they should move relative to each other i mean you can keep the magnet stationary and you can move the solenoid or keep the solenoid stationary and move the magnet they should be moving relative or move both of them they should be moving relative to each other if the magnet and the solenoid, they are moving relatively to each other. If they move relative to each other, the solenoid and the permanent magnet there, if they move relative to each other, EMF will be induced. If they do not move relative to each other, then no EMF will be induced and the galvanometer will show no deflection. So the point is either the magnet should move relative to the solenoid or the solenoid should move relative to the magnet. If you keep the magnet stationary, move the solenoid. 
forward, backward, left and right. There should be relative uh, motion between the magnet and the solenoid and the EMF will be induced and <clears throat> the proof of that induced EMF or that induced current is the deflection in the galvanometer. Galvanometer is an instrument which tells you, uh, which can indicate you the presence of EMF, it can tell you the presence of current and it can tell you the direction of the current also. I hope that that's it. this slide is clear to you. Okay, so by now we have observed one thing that if you have a coil and there is no source of uh, electricity in that coil and if you have a permanent magnet and the coil is placed inside the magnetic field of that permanent magnet and you start moving the permanent magnet or you start moving the coil or you move uh, both of them or you I mean you move them relative to each other EMF is induced in that solenoid so there are two laws of uh, we call them laws of electromagnetic induction one is called the Faraday's law and the other is called Lenz's law so there are two laws of electromagnetic induction one is called Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The other one is called Lenz's law. The Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction is about the magnitude of the induced EMF. The magnitude of the induced EMF uh, depends upon the rate of change of magnetic flux. So the question is, what is magnetic flux? So magnetic flux means the number of lines, magnetic lines, I mean. Magnetic flux means the number of magnetic field lines passing through a, uh, passing through a area, unit area, held perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field magnetic field lines I mean. so the number of magnetic lines which are passing through unit area that is called magnetic flux and that unit area is held if the magnetic lines are coming in this way and you will have held you will hold that area which is a uh, unit area perpendicular to those magnetic lines so number of magnetic lines which are passing through that area that is called magnetic flux so that the magnetic flux should be changing so the emf which is induced its magnitude depends upon is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux remember uh, we say we normally in our class lectures we say that the presence of the magnetic flux will not be able to induce emf if you have a solenoid and the magnetic lines are passing through that solenoid emf will be not induced in that solenoid emf will be only induced in that solenoid when the magnetic flux passing through that solenoid change for example if you have a solenoid and it is placed near a magnetic uh, magnet so its magnetic lines are obviously passing through the solenoid but the presence of the magnetic lines will not induce current EMF in that solenoid. In the solenoid, the EMF will be only induced if the magnetic lines passing through that solenoid start changing. The presence of magnetic flux will be not enough to induce emf the magnetic flux should change 
when the magnetic flux will change then the emf will be induced in the solenoid the induced emf the magnitude of the induced emf depends upon the rate of change of magnetic flux in the circuit you see the in the magnitude of the induced emf does not depend upon the amount of magnetic flux it depends upon the rate of change of magnetic flux not on magnetic flux but rate of change of magnetic flux so this is the statement of the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction that the magnitude of the induced emf in a circuit is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux in the circuit you need to remember this and you need to understand this also because sometimes in the paper they ask you to write faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and sometimes you have to uh, describe that and explain that why emf is induced in that solenoid or a conductor so that was the first law faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so the first law is about the magnitude of the emf induced emf is uh, magnitude the second law which we call lenz law lenz's law some people say lenz's lenz law is about the direction of the induced emf uh in the next few slides you will be able to understand these wordings but for now just remember that the in emf which is induced emf has uh, emf is a vector uh, you know emf has direction and uh, you know the current has direction so the current which is induced will have a certain direction for example if you have a closed circuit the emf induced might be clockwise the emf induced in the closed clock uh, closed circuit might be anti clockwise so that the lenz's law is about the direction of the induced emf so what will be the direction of the induced emf what will be the direction of that induced current which is induced due to the electromagnetic induction the direction of that induced emf is always in such a way that it opposes the cause which induced that emf the direction of the induced emf in the solenoid will be such that it will oppose the cause which induced that emf in the solenoid so for example for example for your understanding this this okay so dear students i am back due to internet connectivity you know it's raining outside and internet connectivity we are um, the lecture was interrupted sorry for that so i was telling you that uh, due to the um, when emf is induced the experiment Uh, which we studied in the last slide when the emf is induced it obeys lenz's law and what the lenz's law says is that the direction of the emf induced will be such that it will oppose the cause which is producing it and i told you that in the next few slides 
uh, you will be understand that what do I mean by this. So till now you should know two things. One that the first law, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, is about the magnitude of the induced EMF, and it says that the magnitude of the induced EMF depends upon is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. And I told you that remember one thing. The presence of the magnetic flux is not the guarantee that the EMF will be induced. When the magnetic flux, flux will change, then the EMF will be induced. And the magnitude of that induced EMF depends upon the rate of change of magnetic flux. It is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. Lenz's law says that the direction of the induced EMF is such that it opposes the cause which produced that emf it opposes the motion or change which produced the emf so it the direction of that emf will be opposing that cause or that motion okay here you can see here you have uh, uh, another experiment and by that experiment, um, uh, we will learn about both these laws. So here you can see we have a solenite. It's a coil. And it's a solenite. We call it solenite. And the ends of that coil, they are connected with a galvanometer. And the, the galvanometer is... Um, an instrument which will tell you the presence of uh, of the current. If the current will be present in this closed circuit, the galvanometer will show deflection. It's a center zero galvanometer, which means that when there is no current in the circuit, the pointer of the galvanometer is in the center. So when there is current present in the circuit, either it will deflect to the right side or it will deflect to the left side depending upon the direction of that current. So because there is no source of electric energy here, so the galvanometer pointer will be in the center. Here, in my hand, I have a permanent magnet. And what with this permanent magnet, I will do, I will move this uh, permanent magnet towards left and then to the right, left and right, left and right. For, for example, if let's say this is the north pole of the permanent magnet, first I will approach the solenite the right side of the solenoid. Then I will stop inside the solenoid. And then I will withdraw this north pole. So I will be moving towards the coil with the north pole of the permanent magnet facing the right side of the solenoid. And then I will, when the solenoid is, when the permanent magnet is inside the solenoid, I will make it stationary. And then I will move it back towards the right. I will withdraw the magnet. Then we will bring the south pole of the permanent magnet towards the right side of the solenoid. So the south pole will be towards the right side of the solenoid. And I will bring that south pole near this coil so that south pole will approach the, uh, this solenoid. And when the permanent magnet will be inside the solenoid, I will make it stationary. And then I will take that permanent magnet back towards the right. So the south pole will be facing the right side of the solenoid and it will be approaching first, then stationary, and then it will be going back. It will be withdrawn. And we will observe that what happens with this pointer on the galvanometer. 
So for example, if the north pole of the permanent magnet is facing the right side of the solenoid, we will observe that what happens with the pointer on the galvanometer when the north pole is approaching the right side of the solenoid. We will observe what happens when I move, I, I make the permanent magnet stationary. What happens with the pointer on the galvanometer? Then we will observe what happens when that north pole is withdrawn, is moved back. What happens with the pointer on the solenoid or on the galvanometer? We will uh, we will do the same observation by bringing the south pole of the permanent magnet towards the right side of the solenoid first we will bring the uh, south pole the south pole will approach the right side of the solenoid we will observe what happens on the galvanometer's pointer then we will observe when the the point the, the permanent magnet becomes stationary what happens with the pointer on the galvanometer then we will withdraw that south pole and we will observe what happens on the pointer of the galvanometer. So this is that experiment. So uh, we will study that, we will study these observations. Okay, let's move to the, I hope you have understood this. Okay, so uh, th th these are the, uh, the proper wordings uh, that, uh, that the whole experiment which I tried to explain to you in my words and these are the proper academic wordings that how the things will work. Connect the ends of a solenoid to a sensitive center zero galvanometer with connecting wires. Move the south pole of a permanent bar magnet into the solenoid and note any deflection on the galvanometer. Once the bar magnet is inside the solenoid, Hold it stationary and note any deflection on the galvanometer. Next move, next move the south pole of the bar magnet out of the solenoid and note any deflection on the galvanometer. Repeat step two to four using the north pole of the same bar magnet. So it's trying to say all that story which I told you on the last slide. I hope you have understood. So here is the first observation. Try to understand, open your mind and be attentive. <clears throat> so here what is happening? Here we have a solenoid. Here I have connected a center zero galvanometer. And this is the right side of the solenoid. And here I have a permanent magnet and its south pole is facing the right side of that solenoid. And what we are doing is that we are moving that south pole. This south pole is approaching. This south pole is approaching the right side of the solenoid. So because when the, this magnet will be moving, its magnetic lines, they are passing through this solenoid. And because when it moves, the magnetic flux which is passing through this solenoid, it starts changing. So EMF is induced here. So when EMF is induced here, you can see the direction of that induced EMF will be in such a way that it will try to oppose the cause which is producing it. And the cause right now is this south pole approaching this right side of the solenoid. To oppose it, the current or the EMF which will be induced in this solenoid will have a direction in, in such a direction that this, the magnetic field which is produced, induced, due to that induced current on that solenoid will be in such a way that it will create here the south pole. And the reason will be because it will try to stop this approaching south pole. 
how you can approach this approaching south pole that the electromagnet which should be formed here should have a south pole here to repel this because that's the lenz's law the emf induced will have the direction in such a way that it will try to oppose the cause which is producing it so when the south pole of this permanent magnet will be approaching this solenoid the emf induced in this solenoid will be in a such a way that the electromagnet which would be formed on this uh, this uh, solenoid will have a south pole south pole here to oppose this approaching south pole that's the lenz's law and from here and you know of the solenoid that end which has uh, south pole the solenoid the electromagnet is when the on the solenoid when the electromagnet is formed on the solenoid so on the south pole of that solenoid the current will be clockwise so if here the current is clockwise then the emf will be or the current will be going in this direction you know so that's why the pointer of that center zero galvanometer it has been deflected towards the left side because the conventional current is flowing in this way okay the induced current will be flowing in this way from b to a i hope that you you have understood this okay let's move to the next slide when the south pole of the bar magnet was moved towards the solenoid the galvanometer needle was deflected momentarily to one side this shows that an emf was induced in the coil and a current flowed through the galvanometer the induced current produced an south pole at the end of the solenoid to repel the south pole of the bar magnet moving towards it i hope that you have understood this slide is about the previous slide which i have already explained to you now here we have another situation here now that south pole of the bar magnet is inside the solenoid and you have made it stationary you have stopped it moving when you stop moving the bar magnet the galvanometer pointer shows no deflection when it shows no deflection it means that there is no current induced there is no emf induced and we know that i told i told you a sentence that here you know this magnet is present inside the solenoid but no emf is induced because this magnet is not not moving it is stationary here its magnetic lines are present still the magnetic lines are present here the magnetic flux is passing through this solenoid but the magnetic flux is not changing i told you that the emf is only induced when the bar magnet is moving relatively to the coil only the emf is induced when the magnetic flux passing through that solenoid is changing the presence of the magnetic flux will not induce the current the magnetic flux should be changing the bar magnet should be moving relative to the coil so in this diagram you can see that the south south pole of the bar magnet is facing the right side of the uh, of the solenoid and the sol the bar magnet is inside the solenoid but it is stationary it's not moving when it's not moving no emf is induced no current is induced that's why the galvanometer shows no deflection which tells us that the emf or the current is only induced when the bar magnet is moving 
I hope that you have understood. Okay. So here is the third situation. You see, in this we have a solenoid. It's the same same uh, uh, experiment we are doing. Step by step, I'm telling you the observations of the galvanometer. Here we have a bar magnet. Its south pole is facing the right side of the solenoid. And now I am moving it away from this right side of the solenoid. Now what will happen? This south pole is going away. So due to the motion of the bar magnet, the current will be induced in the galvanometer. The EMF will be induced in the galvanometer. And the galvanometer in, in the, I mean the solenoid, sorry. And the galvanometer will show deflection. But interestingly, the galvanometer showed deflection towards right now. The direction of the, def uh, the direction of the deflection of the pointer of the galvanometer is opposite to the case one. When the south pole was approaching the right side, the galvanometer showed a deflection towards left. But now it is showing deflection towards the right. It means that the EMF induced or the current induced this time has opposite direction. In the first case, the current was flowing from B to A, but now the current will be flowing from A to B. That's why the deflection in the galvanometer is towards right. So you see here, the south pole is moving away from the right side of the solenoid. So the current will be induced in the solenoid because the magnetic flux of this permanent magnet, which is passing through this solenoid, is changing because the magnet is moving. So the, the magnetic flux, which is passing through this solenoid, is changing. So the EMF is induced. The direction of the EMF induced is in such a way that the electromagnet, which is formed on that solenoid, will have a north pole here. And how do I know that we have a north pole here? Because it will try to oppose this motion because the south pole is going away. If you want to stop the south pole, which is going away, here I should have a north pole. So it opposed that withdrawing south pole. So here, a North Pole will appear to stop the, the South Pole, which is going away. So that's the Lenz law. Lenz's law says that the direction of the induced EMF will be in such a way that it will try to oppose the cause which induced it. You see? This south pole is going away. That's why the current is induced in this coil, in this solenoid. And the electromagnet, which is induced due to that current, will have a north pole here. Because that north pole will attract this south, south pole. So it will try to oppose the motion of this south pole. That's the lens. So I hope that you have under, understood this. Okay, so this slide explains the previous slide. When the south pole of the bar magnet was moved away from the solenoid, the galvanometer needle was deflected momentarily to the other side. This shows that an EMF was induced in the coil and a current flowed through the galvanometer. The induced current produced an north pole at the end of the solenoid to attract the south pole of the bar magnet moving away from it. I have already explained you the detail of that slide. Okay, let's move to the next thing. So here again, here you can see uh, it's the same experiment. Here I have a solenoid. That solenoid is connected with a um, zero center zero galvanometer, and there is no source of electricity. Obviously, 
So there will be no electricity in this solar line. But what I'm doing here, I have a bar magnet, a permanent magnet, and its north pole is facing the right side of the solar line. And what we are doing is we are, uh, this north is moving, is approaching this right side of the solar line. So this permanent magnet is moving towards this solar line. So this north pole of the permanent magnet is basically approaching this right side of the solar line. Its magnetic flux is passing through this coil. And because the magnet is moving, so the magnetic flux passing through this coil or this sunlight is changing. Due to this changing magnetic flux, what will happen? EMF will be induced here. And you can see when this north pole was approaching this right side of the solenoid, the galvanometer showed a deflection towards right. When it shows a deflection towards right, it means that the current which is induced here, uh, that current is flowing from A to B because the galvanometer is showing deflection towards right. It means that the current flowing is from A to B. The current which is uh, induced here will be in such a way that the electromagnet which will be formed on that solenoid that will have a north pole here. And why will it will have a north pole here? Because it by creating a north pole here, 